back with another video on around the Armstrong table. We have some braised short ribs with a mushroom risotto and some spicy spinach. Enjoy the video. Let's get this dish started. We're gonna start by dry brining the short ribs for four to 24 hours. I'm just gonna put some salt on them and allow the salt to penetrate the meat. Uh, the longer it sits, the better it gets. Let's get this going. Once the ribs come out, you'll be able to see that the salt has penetrated the ribs, but it doesn't penetrate the fat. So we'll get those and leave them to the side. Next, we're gonna bring in our mirepoix, onions, celery, and carrots. And that's gonna be the base of our dish, so I'll quickly chop those up. And we're gonna get this dish started. Here's the liquids that's gonna go in the short ribs. And this is basically the essential parts of here. I got a little secret ingredient with beer that I'm excited about. So I got a new uh, Dutch oven that I'm gonna be cooking this dish in. And uh, so we're gonna get this started. First, I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil into the pan and, or excuse me, that is avocado oil. Uh, we don't wanna use olive oil because it would've burned already. So we'll use the avocado oil to start with. Short ribs, like I said, we don't need to add anything to them as far as for pepper or anything along those lines because the salt has already penetrated through the meat. So we wanna get a nice crust on these short ribs to start with and we'll let all of that, that fat render out and cook out. And it'll just take a few minutes before that gets going and you'll be able to see how this uh, quickly transitions uh, as the short ribs start to cook a little bit more. Once the short ribs start to brown, this goes extremely quick. Um, I'm gonna add each of them in, by, in batches. Uh, I don't wanna overcrowd the pan, but you'll see all of them will be done here shortly. And again, these are not cooked by any means. This is just to brown them, and then we're gonna put them aside. And the main reason you wanna brown them, it just gives that, that crust and um, allows the meat to um, be a little bit more tender. And also it looks good for presentation when you got that, that nice crust on the outside. So we'll put these aside for just a minute and we'll allow them to sit as we get the rest of the ingredients in the pan. Now one thing I advise everybody to do, the short ribs are pretty fatty, so you wanna make sure you take some of that oil out of the pan and uh, before you put your mirror fly. So that's what you saw me do there. Take some of that oil out. Now I'll go ahead and get that mirror fly in there. Again, that's onions, celery, and carrots, which you guys know. Um, it's gonna be the base of this dish. Try to get every little bite in there. And we wanna get these not necessarily cooked all the way down, um, but you wanna make sure that they're tender. So just get them as tender as you possibly can. Before you start adding in some of your other ingredients, I'm gonna add a little S&P, a little salt and pepper, and everybody can add this to taste. Um, I'm gonna say this is about a tablespoon of salt and pepper, and the salt will actually start to extract some of that moisture, especially out of the onions and carrots, and um, get those cooking down. Next, I'll go ahead and add a little bit of garlic. Uh, as you guys seen in my previous videos, I love garlic um, it is an essential food group in this house so we have to have the garlic to uh, pretty much go in almost everything so we'll get that cooked down for just a second next we're gonna add a little bay leaf um, I use dry bay leaf and they work just fine they're actually more intense than flavor so you'll, you'll, you'll like those I think those add a, a nice kick in the background Smoked paprika, one of my favorite ingredients, and adds some nice flavor there. Next, we're gonna add in some Italian seasoning. Uh, with just about any short rib Italian seasoning, I mean, it has all those other 
ingredients like marjoram and um, some of them have sage in it. I mean, it just depends on how you, how you want to look at that ingredient, but there's some, some good flavor with adding that. And now we're gonna add the, the star of the show. So this is one of my favorite beers to drink, but in short ribs, it is even better. So I know the name weirds people out, but it is Dragon's Milk, <laughs> just the way it sounds. But I'm telling you, the flavors of this beer is fantastic. And it really adds a unique depth of flavor. Of course, I gotta add my what's that here sauce as you guys have seen me say in some of the other videos uh, Worcestershire a couple dashes of that um, adds a little bit of uh, some nice flavor we added some better than bouillon and uh, I don't like to add too much of this because it's a very intense flavor and it can take over a dish really quick um, with all the flavors we already have going on with the beer and some of the other things we don't want to add too much of that so next we're going to throw the short ribs back in and uh, what you would do is for the most part let that, that beer just come up to a quick simmer and then once that comes up to a simmer you want to add the short ribs back in. Uh, again you can see the nice beautiful color on the short ribs and get every ounce of what's on that plate in the in the pot. That's, that's all flavor, you don't want to leave any of that there. So what we'll do next is we're going to add our, our beef broth and um, I just typically use whatever is on sale um, you know I don't, I don't have a I'm not brand loyal to any of the, the beef broths or anything along those lines but uh, once my short ribs like I said come up to a boil with the beer or at least a simmer I'll go ahead and add the beef broth and I only added one cup uh, that's that's more than enough to add to it and as you can see I mean they look beautiful already but they have a long way to go so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this into a 350 degree oven uh, for about three to four hours um, you could cook it on a lower temp but it would just take longer uh, this is a weekday so we need to get this done Now we're gonna start our side dish. A beautiful mushroom risotto. Uh, this is a fun dish for me to prepare. So I hope you guys enjoy using it for yourself and trying it. So we're gonna start off with two pots. As you can see, there's one pot right behind. That pot actually has uh, some chicken broth in there. And I have it on a simmer. So it does have some heat to it because the last thing for a risotto is you wanna is adding um, cold liquid to it so I got some extra virgin olive oil in the pot and I'm gonna add some sliced mushrooms and those are gonna be the, the base of this dish uh, we want to get them cooked down for just a minute and um, just to get that that caramelization on those so I added a little bit of butter um, just to help the cooking process go a little bit quicker and uh, start to get some of those brown bits on the mushrooms because that's what you want um, and you gotta get those cooked down real good uh, just so we don't have any type of sponginess when we go to eat the mushrooms especially in the risotto you want to make sure all the pieces of the pie is nice and tender so as you can see this will cook for a little bit and those mushrooms are starting to get the color that we're looking for as well as the shallots we'll get those um, coming here in just a second uh, but see we want to extract all of that liquid out we don't want any of that we want that that nice brown color as you guys will see here in just a second so I had the shallots uh, one chopped salad that's all we need one chopped shallot and um, I think I just said salad but it's shallots and uh, it's kind of like an onion and a garlic mix but adds very very good flavor to this dish now that's what we're looking for that nice brown color and risotto is one of those dishes you really have to take your time with. You can't rush this by any means. Uh, I know it's a time consuming dish, but when you pair it with short ribs, it's worth it. So I'm gonna add some garlic to this. And uh, I did four, four cloves of garlic chopped. Uh, we'll get those sauteed just a minute. And uh, again, I'm getting all of the bits and pieces of the garlic out of there because it's just an essential ingredient. 
So the star for the risotto is arborio rice. Um, arborio rice is a, a very short grained rice. And uh, this is a rice that the nice thing is you, you don't have to really soak this rice. You could. Um, but what I like to do is throw it in a pot dry. And what I want to do is actually let it brown a little bit almost just to get that nuttiness out of the rice. Uh, it's really good when you do so before you start to ladle your liquid in. And as you can see, it starts to almost caramelize just a little bit. You know, it's not gonna do a ton, but that's what you want. So, of course, I gotta add some sherry wine to this. Um, great background note. You've seen me add sherry in other dishes. And we just wanna let that cook down for just a second before we start to ladle all of the, the goodness in. So this will be our, our first ladle and what will happen is once the rice starts to come up it'll come up to kind of a quick boil and drain that and you can see that starting to form now. My family and I recently went to Pigeon Forge and I stopped at a place to get all of these different spices and it's the uh, all kind of tea blends. I'll leave the description down below but they had an ingredient that I had to try. So I walked out of that store a happy man. And this is one of them. It's a bacon smoked sea salt. So for this dish, as you notice, I didn't add any salt, but I figured I would add a little bit of this and this dish will be plenty salty with some of the other ingredients that we're gonna add later on. But I thought that bacon would add a nice background note. So I am experimenting, but I think for you guys, like I said, I'll leave the description below. It'll be really, really nice for you to reach out to these guys and, and they'll send it to you. They'll send it anywhere in the country uh, and it'll come right to your door. And I got some other spices from there as well, but really good. So now we're gonna mix this. And um, again, every time the, the liquid starts to get a little bit lower, we're just gonna ladle in as we go and um, add as we go just fine. Uh, that's the beauty of risotto. Like I said, it, it takes a little bit of time, but once the rice starts to get tender, then you can go ahead and finish the dish up. So we're, we're, as you can see, we're nearing that point, but it does take a little bit of time to get there. And um, once the rice reaches its peak, like as you can see right now, it's really, really tender. Um, I taste it a little bit. You're gonna add some heavy cream and about a third of a cup. And this is when things start to happen and everybody is happy at this point so slowly stir that heavy cream let that just soak into that rice and then you're going to add another ingredient that is really going to be the, the salt factor in here which is some parmesan cheese so i'm going to sh shred that right in there and i mean it's, it's going to go in real real nice uh so i added a good bit because in my opinion you can never have enough cheese uh, it is uh, an essential ingredient that you absolutely have to have uh, so get as much cheese as you possibly can in your risotto and allow that to to keep going so next what we'll do is we'll get this mixed up just a little bit and there's a, another side dish that I'm gonna make with this I'm gonna add some chopped parsley here and the risotto is pretty much done. So what I'll do at this point is I'll go ahead and set the risotto to the side and next we're gonna move on to our spicy sauteed spinach. Take a look at that. The risotto's now off to the side. This is my version of spicy sauteed spinach. Now, here's the thing about the spinach, okay? Be careful with your ingredients. Okay, we're gonna start with some extra virgin olive oil. Uh, just about one tablespoon of olive oil. And I sliced up some onions to go with this. Um, just so we have something tender to um, to eat with the, the spinach. Um, spinach by itself to me is just kind of bland. So I like to add a little bit of something extra to it. So that way the um, spinach is, is nice and flavorful. So I'm gonna add some crushed red pepper flakes. Now, in our house, we like things a little bit spicier than most, so I would caution you, do not add as much as I did. Um, 
because it added quite a bit of spice <laughs> um, to the spinach. It was still good, but it was uh, definitely had a nice kick to it. So this dish is going to go extremely quick. Um, it's spinach. I mean, once you put it in the pot, it wills pretty quick, but you just need some type of background flavor. So a little bit of salt and pepper uh, to go into this. And we'll let the, uh, the onions kind of cook down. We don't need these to caramelize or anything like that. We really just need them to be uh, translucent or tender, if you want to say. But we'll go ahead and add a whole container of uh, spinach in there. And you could either get in a container. I know some people will get the, uh, the bag of spinach, but either one of them will work just fine. And um, again, it looks like a whole lot, but as you know, spinach cook down, cooks down really, really quickly. So once you add the spinach, it is, um, it, it goes very, very quickly from here and, and takes no time for the spinach to be done. Yeah, once that spinach wilts down, as you can see, I mean, obviously I sped it up a little bit, but this, this goes extremely quick and uh, spinach is one of those things. As soon as you apply any type of heat to it, it, it goes, you know, quick. I added a little bit more salt and pepper to taste. Um, you know, we can't have bland food. So spinach is done. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this aside and get those short ribs out of the oven. My goodness look at these beautiful short ribs the bones just come right out of those um, they've been cooking for a nice amount of time uh, to be honest I could have left these in longer uh, but being that it was a weekday and my daughter was hungry I had to get them out after three hours so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the short ribs out real quick uh, put them aside get the bones off of there and that liquid at the bottom I'm gonna make a gravy out of that. So just, just give that just a minute. I'll, I'll go ahead and, and use my immersion blender uh, right there in the pot. And um, this makes life a whole lot easier so I don't have to drain anything. But it'll make a nice gravy. And um, I'm gonna put the short ribs right back in, get everybody all happy in the pool, incorporated together. And then what we're gonna do after that is just plate up this dish get everybody all on one plate together so that way you guys can see the finished product and I tell you I am very very excited to eat this one so first what I'm gonna do is add the spinach on to the plate um, just gonna put it off to the side and uh, you know I got out I don't know if you would consider that a fancy plate but that, that's my version of my fancy plate <laughs> uh, and then um, next we're gonna add the risotto and like I said, this, this risotto is it's, it's just going to be perfect as a resting vehicle for the short rib to sit on. Um, and I tell you, you, you guys will absolutely uh, enjoy this, this recipe for the risotto. At least I hope you will. And next we're going to throw the short rib right on top. And we're going to add some of that delicious gravy. Um, almost ran away from me. So, uh, but I tell you, it is extremely fork tender and uh, what a delicious dish to make so uh, please enjoy like and subscribe to the channel I hope you enjoy me making these videos as much as I do and from my table to your table thank you for watching around the Armstrong table